Subplots can be a confusing part of the writing process, but they don't have to be. And today I'm going to simplify things and help you write subplots with confidence. What's up, guys? My name is Brandon McNulty. I'm a writer. I'm the author of Bad Parts, and welcome to my writing channel. Last week, I did a video on the subject of writing complex scenes, and I described these as scenes that involve both your main plot as well as one or more of your subplots. And in these complex scenes, you combine the two in order to create an efficient scene that provides meaning and excitement for the audience. Now, while I was doing that video, I really wanted to touch more on the subject of subplots because I know a lot of writers struggle with that. And today, what I'm going to be focusing on is what subplots are, how you can use them, and the different types of subplots. I'm also going to give you some examples later on in the video, but for now I want to focus on some important facts about subplots. First thing is the definition of a subplot, and the definition of a subplot is that it's a secondary plot. It's a supporting plot. And when we're talking about what a subplot is supporting, it's going to be supporting your main plot, and the main plot is your core central conflict. Now, on its own, a main plot, just that core conflict, the back and forth between hero and antagonist, that can get boring after a while, so we need subplots in order to layer things off and make things interesting. We need subplots in order to enhance the main plot, and they can also enhance our understanding of the characters. And subplots can also add meaning and interest to your story as well, so keep that in mind definition of a subplot is that it's a supporting plot. Another important thing to know is that in order to understand how to use subplots, you need to understand that at the center of most stories is this battle between a character's want and a character's need. Usually what a character wants at the beginning of the story is something that is misguided. They might want like personal glory or they might want tons of money when in fact what they really need in order to be happy is something different. Something like maybe finding a family or healing a broken relationship or overcoming coming a character flaw and just you know, making the people around them happier. So tying into this is this idea of character flaws and at the heart of this want versus need battle is usually a character's flaw. They have something that is keeping them from being happy and it's pushing them more toward that want that I discussed earlier. With subplots, how they factor into this, subplots will usually push a character toward a need and typically I think the most common type of subplot is the romantic subplot. Usually we will have two characters who get together. The romantic interest will challenge your main character character to become a better person, to overcome that flaw, in most cases. And how a character reacts to a subplot will ultimately determine how things pan out at the end of the story. If they overcome that flaw, it will typically be because of how they interacted with their different subplots, whether they be a romantic subplot, mentor subplot, so on and so on. Now, one thing I do want to add to this is that sometimes you also have subplots that can be negative, meaning that they can actually pull your character away from that need. Instead of having the romantic subplot where the romantic interest is challenging the hero to become a better person, you might have a negative romantic subplot where the, the love interest is actually enabling the hero to go toward that want instead of toward the need. So think about those things as well. You can have a positive subplot or a negative subplot. It's all about how you want to structure things. But regardless of whether you go with positive or negative, ultimately is the it is the hero's choice that will define how the subplot and how the story overall plays out. Now let's take a look at some different types of subplots. And I have five specific types that I want to talk about today. These are five of the most common subplots out there. They are certainly not all of them. There are, there are tons of different types of subplots you can have, but the most common ones are topped by the first one I'm going to be talking about today, and that's the romantic subplot. And a romantic subplot is a love story that challenges a character's weakness. Now, a positive example of this would be Mary Jane Watson in Spider-Man 2. I talked about Spider-Man 2 a lot in the past video, and in Spider-Man 2, the core conflict is Peter Parker versus Spider-Man. It's him having an identity crisis. And this subplot factors into it because Mary Jane is at the heart of what Peter wants. And because he wants her, he wants to be with her, it causes him to want to abandon his job as Spider-Man, abandon his responsibility. But over the course of the story, he is challenged by this, and he realizes that he can protect her as both Peter Parker, and he can also protect her as Spider-Man. And that helps him find balance, which is what he needs in Spider-Man 2. And ultimately, at the end of the story, 
she ends up saving him and helping him reconcile his two identities. An example of a negative romantic subplot would be from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And this is the movie where Indiana Jones and pretty much everybody in the movie is pursuing the Holy Grail. And this includes his love interest, Elsa, who is actually a femme fatale. She is working with the Nazis, she is using Indy, she is setting him up, and she is eventually going to betray him about midway through the movie. And her problem is that she overvalues power. She is drawn to the mystery of the Holy Grail, much like Indy is. And Indy is, of course, tempted by her. And over the course of the story, there's a back and forth between them, even after her betrayal. And Indy wants to save her at the end, and she wants to grab the Holy Grail before it falls into the abyss. Ultimately, she falls into the, the abyss herself, but Indy chooses to not make her mistake, and instead, he realizes that what he needs is a meaningful relationship with his father, and he ends up being saved as a result by turning away from his negative romantic interest. Another type of subplot is the mentor subplot. This is one where you have a character learning from an expert. They could be learning a job or a skill or a superpower or any number of things. An example of a positive mentor would be Obi-Wan from Star Wars, and Luke learns from Obi-Wan, he learns to believe in the Force, and that ultimately allows Luke to blow up the Death Star. An example of a negative mentor subplot would be in The Graduate, and this is a movie about a young man named Benjamin. He's just graduated from college, and he's indecisive. He doesn't know where his life needs to go, where he wants wants to go as far as what job he wants, what will make him happy, things like that. And Mrs. Robinson is an older woman. She's married to one of his father's friends, and she seduces Benjamin early on in the movie. She manipulates him, and she denies him from finding a meaningful life in his early adulthood. However, toward the end of the movie, Benjamin turns away from Mrs. Robinson and gets back on the right track. A third example would be a family subplot, and this usually addresses a conflict between two family members. A positive example of a family subplot would involve, once again, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. We have a conflict between Indiana Jones and his father, Henry Jones Sr. And this subplot teaches Indy that family is a greater discovery than the Holy Grail. His time spent with his father chasing after the Holy Grail, they eventually find the Holy Grail, but they don't care about it. They care much more about each other at the end of the story. Now, an example of a negative family subplot would be from Game of Thrones, and I'm thinking specifically of Tyrion and Tywin Lannister. And Tywin, who is the father, he resents his, his son for being born because when Tyrion was born, uh, Tywin's wife died in childbirth. So ever since the kid was born, Tywin has hated his son, and this resentment keeps Tyrion from succeeding in life. And it isn't until Tyrion resolves this subplot in season four that he finally gives himself the opportunity to find a meaningful position within the world that utilizes his skills and his talents. A fourth type of subplot would be the friendship subplot, and this is pretty similar to the love story. The only difference is that there's no romance, but you still have two people, and one of these people is trying to challenge the other person to overcome their flaw. A positive example would be from the movie Rocky III, and in this movie you have Rocky and Apollo Creed. These two were rivals, they fought each other in the two previous movies, but now, after Rocky he suffers a major defeat, he needs to get his fighting spirit back, and Apollo Creed challenges Rocky to overcome his fear, get back in the ring, and fight to win back his heavyweight title. Now a negative friendship example would be from The Walking Dead, and I'm looking at Rick and Negan after the Negan War in this series. And after the Negan War, basically Rick establishes a community, he becomes the leader of this community, but being a leader is not without its challenges. And while he keeps Negan in prison, Rick visits him from time to time to feed him. And during these moments, Negan encourages Rick to manipulate and deceive the people that he's in charge of. And it's tempting because Rick is desperate to keep his people in line. And eventually Rick finds a middle ground where he does take some of Negan's advice. And eventually over the course of the story, the two come to respect one another as a result. And a fifth type of example is a career slash financial subplot. This usually involves financial struggles and how people respond to them. A positive example of this would be from It's a Wonderful Life. In this movie, George Bailey, he's a building and loan banker, and he sacrifices a lot of his dreams over the course of his adult life in order to help his community. And he constantly questions whether he should be doing this or whether he should be pursuing what he wants. But in the end, when he finds himself in some dire financial trouble, his sacrifices are 
paid off, and he ends up getting out of a rough situation thanks to the help of his community. And then a negative example of a career financial subplot would be in the first two Rocky movies. In the first movie, Rocky is working as a loan shark, and this is what his, his mentor, his trainer Mick says, is a waste of life. In Rocky II, Rocky works a bunch of odd jobs instead of pursuing his goal of getting another shot at the heavyweight title. So in both cases, Rocky, you know, when he's going after these different jobs, it's pushing him away from who he needs to be as a person. So the important thing to remember is that subplots exist to support your main plot and to enhance it, to add layers to your story. Subplots also help give us a better understanding of who your characters are. And if you plan on including subplots in your story, one thing you absolutely have to remember is that you need to figure out who your main character is and then figure out their want versus need. What is your main character's misguided want and what is the thing they need in order to be happy? Once you understand these things, you can start building subplots. And remember that subplots can be either positive or negative. Positive meaning that a subplot will push your main character toward that need, and negative meaning that a subplot will push your character down the wrong path toward that want. So these things are important to keep in mind, and one other thing that you have to remember is that characters will ultimately decide whether or not they learn from these subplots. So whether or not they choose to do the right thing is ultimately up to them. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what is one type of subplot that you've included in your current work in progress? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of Bad Parts if you haven't already. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend. And as always, remember to keep on writing.